All right, let's talk about Sonic Frontiers. This is a game that I have played obsessively on the PlayStation 5, and I played a little bit on the Nintendo Switch. And I got to tell you, sometimes there are games that are released that are very problematic in terms of technological prowess and all of the things that they are aspiring to do within a game that don't quite work. And I think Sonic Frontiers is plagued by all kinds of technical issues, lots of pop-in, lots of draw-in, camera just not being able to keep up with the pace of the experience. This is a three-dimensional Sonic game for the most part, although there are lots of great mini-missions in this game that call back to all kinds of great 2D Sonic experiences, which are a lot of fun. But for the most part, this is kind of an open world, roam around wherever you want to in 3D and take on bad guys and collect all kinds of different types of loot, rescue these little Coco creatures and buff up and power up and gain new abilities and explore. And so what that means is that you you can whip around as Sonic and you'll see trees and all kinds of rails and platforms and stuff just pop into frame. And that happens on the PlayStation 5. It really happens on the Nintendo Switch. And of course, on the PlayStation 5, you can up the frame rate to go to 60 frames per second, which honestly, it's very, very difficult to go back to 30 frames per second, which is the max output of the Nintendo Switch. And you can also play in higher resolution mode on the PlayStation 5, but that drops it down to 30 frames per second. You get queasy trying to move around this fast as this character in 30 frames. It just doesn't quite work. Although I do have to say that it is still freaking awesome to play this ambitious game, even though it's fraught with problems, on the portable screen of the Nintendo Switch. I have the OLED model. I talk about it all the time. I hate to sound like I'm bragging, but I love the freaking OLED model, and it looks awesome on the OLED screen. And what happened while I played this game is that I had a lot of issues with it. I, the first time I even touched this game was streaming it. And while I was streaming it, I was completely lost in the fiction and the story, because when you're talking with the people while you're playing the game, sometimes you just aren't keeping up on all the lore and bits of information. And the game does throw a lot of text on screen to explain all of Sonic's moves and abilities and what the hell you're doing here and what, what is happening. You keep finding digital versions of all of Sonic's characters uh, as you roam around on each of these different islands. And the islands are vast and there's lots to explore. But it just felt really incongruous and weird, you know, because Sonic is like running around in the world of Death Stranding. It's gray, it's rainy, it's desolate. There are robot creatures that just sort of erupt and start chasing after you and you have to take them down. And then you start to learn some combo moves and maneuvers that give you all kinds of great flourishes while you're in combat. And what happened is I enjoyed it on the stream and then I just kept going and playing and I found myself getting completely addicted to the game of it, to, to the play of it. I loved jumping into the cyber missions and trying to collect all the red coins and get that S rating. Didn't get it very often, but get that S rating on beating the level as quickly as possible and collect as many rings and save them as I got to the end as often as I could. And those are challenging and fun and rewarding. So there's these little bursts of like old arcadey kind of Sonic experiences. And then I also just enjoyed running around the traversal system of Sonic, whipping around super fast, trying to, you know, do the loop-de-loops and jump from rail to rail and hit the bumpers. And although it drove me nuts that I couldn't tell if there was stuff over there that I could run to, you know, until I got up close to it. And then I'd see a rail pop in and I'm like, oh, I can jump over there. I just sort of got into the groove of the game and just sort of exploring these islands and rushing to the edge of a cliff and, you know, thinking, oh my God, this could be it. I'm falling over. I'm falling to my doom. And of course, Sonic can't swim. And so that happened a lot because I'd sort of have a leap of faith that I'd jump out and I'd think, I'm going to hit some kind of bumper and some of that auto-targeting will pop up and I'll be able to bounce around. And sometimes that wouldn't happen, but sometimes it would. And so I got addicted to exploring and figuring out the little secrets and they have these little question mark areas which send out this radar pulse across the land and it unlocks a little bit of the fog around the map so you can see a little bit more and then you can go into the portals that send you to the cyber missions and then you're unlocking the chaos emeralds and you're fighting bigger and stranger bosses there are all these robotic creations and all of it seems a bit tangential and strange and odd you've got dr eggman talking to the cyber girl who pops up every once in a while with warnings and threats and we find out about this lost civilization and there's like a somber sadness that permeates throughout this game and the character models 
aren't really great. <laughs> you know, they're very simplistic. Definitely not state of the art for the types of games that we can play today. Technically and visually, it's just, it's bumpy. You know, it's very bumpy, but it's fast and it's tactile and it's fun and it's different and it's weird. That's the other thing too, is like, I like the weirdness. And I, I, because I wasn't paying attention to every bit of text that was popping up, I was really stumped about what the hell was going on. Like, where am I supposed to go? What am I supposed to do? And honestly, I liked that. I liked that there was just this giant shroud of mystery as I was playing this game. And at the core of it was just a fun game to play. I loved all of it. I loved exploring across these islands and seeing how high I could get. And I, I could feel the palms of my hands getting sweaty on, on some of these levels where I'm climbing to these huge, incredibly tall vertical destinations. And I'd be looking down. It recalled some of the feelings that I had playing the earliest Assassin's Creeds and jumping off of these giant towers for the very first time but everything's at super speed and a little chaotic and a little slippery and the controls, you just can't be super precise in the Sonic games. You have to have some forgiveness because of the pace of everything. And sometimes as well, the cameras will just snap into position and lock so that you can do something on a horizontal plane for a bit, you know, and it sort of takes control of it. And then you take control back as you bounce along and then encounter some big 3D boss that you're trying to figure out. And the game doesn't hold your hand in those moments either, you know, because you have all of these skills that you're unlocking through the skill tree, although I ended up with tons and tons of extra skill points and no extra skills to acquire, which is problematic. I mean, the gameplay balancing, game design balancing is all over the place. And definitely, once you beat the whole game, you recognize that there is a sameness that permeates from beginning to end. It doesn't really differ and vary in surprise enough. But holy hell, I was addicted and I had so much fun. I couldn't stop playing it. I still think it's a wonderful, wonderful game. It's one of my favorites of 2022 and I am so shocked because I've never liked 3D Sonic games before. And I know that a lot of people love the Sonic Generations. And there's a lot of callbacks to previous Sonic experiences and lots of story bits for the super fans in there. And of course, I'm not one of those in terms of 3D. So now it's kind of encouraged me to go back and take a look at things. And I know that Sonic Generations runs really well on the Xbox Series X because it was an Xbox 360 game that's been improved through backwards compatibility. So I do plan to do that. But I was shocked how much I enjoyed playing this game. I literally could not stop playing it. It's very compulsive. It, cre it creates this really fantastic loop where you get a gear to unlock the portal and then you get enough keys to go off and get an emerald and then you'll fight a big boss and you'll unlock a new island to explore. And so even though it has a ton of issues and tons of problems, which I completely understand, this is another one of those games that flouts all of that stuff and just delivers really, really fun gameplay. I don't believe that Sega is going to spend the time and the money to kind of tweak and improve and finesse and patch this thing up to make everything run better. I also have heard, as many of you super fans out there have heard about this being kind of the the fresh new beginning for Sonic in 3D. I welcome that news. I think that's great. And they can only get better from here. It's a good base, but certainly in terms of open world experiences, we've got a lot of excellent ones that really show off their technical horsepower in more substantial ways. This one's about gameplay and about creating all of these really interesting and fun moment to moment experiences that I found incredibly compelling and very hard to walk away from, very hard to put the controller down. If you have the choice to buy this for a modern console like a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X or a super powerful PC, I'd lean in that direction because you're going to want the horsepower to run this as best as you can, even though you're going to be making some concessions technically. It still is a fun game on the Switch, though, and I was a bit shocked. It is even a bigger shock to go from something running a little smoother on the PlayStation 5 to the Nintendo Switch, but it's still fun on the Nintendo Switch. So I think this game is great, and uh, I recommend it. You do have to kind of forgive some of its sins, but I think you're going to have an awesome time. With Sonic Frontiers, I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10.